Welcome, I'm Lizzie Brooks, and this is Paper Plate or Socks Core Workout. So if you have wood floors or tile, socks can work really, really well. If the tile is raised or separated a lot with a large grout line, that could hurt your toes, so you might wanna use paper plates or sliders if you have sliders that you can get online or at a workout equipment store. Um, as far as socks go, a thicker sock is going to be more heating, but it can give you a little more cushion. You just wanna choose a sock that you're able to slide in. And if you do have carpet in your house, paper plates or sliders are gonna be much easier, obviously, to slide on. But because the paper plate, when you slide across them, right, makes noise, I'm going to forgo the paper plates and I'm going to use my awesome socks that my friend Sherry got me, the Duchess of Sassy Town. So let's get sassy together. Okay, so for today's workout, I'm um, folding my mat over a few times. Um, you could put your hands down on just your regular floor or a carpet or just the tile, whatever feels most comfortable to you so that we can free up the area around us for a slide and sliding into core strength. So to begin, go ahead and place your hands on whichever surface feels good to you and bring yourself into a plank pose. We're just going to start to wake up the thighs, the core, the shoulders by sliding, bending the knees and drawing one foot in and then out. So we're alternating which knee is coming in. This could be tiny or it could be very, very large. Either one is gonna work and create heat. And now, if you want, you can start to work them more at the same time. Instead of sort of waiting, you can go back and forth at the same time. Okay, is the workout done? <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. All right, walk the feet in. Take one elbow in each hand and just do a little sway. You might wanna bend the knees here. Catch your breath, as you can see, my socks, my socks are kind of too big. <laughs> You're not supposed to look cool. <laughs> Bend your knees and round all the way up. The purpose of this is not to look cool, it's to get a strong core. And shake that up. Okay, so shake that out rather. Move whatever surface you're going to be on, if it's a mat, into the middle, okay? So what that means is you can do this all on a floor like this, but to get more traction on one foot, you might take your sock off or step it on something that's less slippery. And we're gonna step it pretty far over to the edge of that. Bring your hands to your waist. That's gonna be the knee that bends and you're gonna take the left foot out. So this will be your right knee bending and the left foot coming out. We're going to just bend, extend, opposite leg and straighten up. So I only have the ball joints and the toes of my left leg down, because I'm, I'm mirroring you guys, it's really my right leg, don't tell anybody. And I'm just bending and straightening, working both legs. You'll start to really feel the glutes and the quads of that stabilization leg, really working. Two more. And last one, aren't you glad this is gonna be a short practice? <laughs> Me too, okay. Pause in the middle, take a deep breath, and shake it out. Let's go directly to the other side. So we're taking our foot kind of more over. So if we start here, we're not sliding back close, but if we start with the feet closer together, more on the edge of your stable surface, then we can bring more straight leg in between and take the legs closer together. So think more so hinging the hip back than just the knee forward, okay? So hinging, getting into that posterior chain, working your hamstrings and glutes up and down. That heart rate should be up. And you're thinking about putting more weight into that standing leg rather than putting so much more weight into the other leg that it's hard to get it back, right? So. Keep more weight in that standing leg so that the extended leg can move more freely. Keep the breath going, don't hold it. I know, we kinda wanna hold it when we're doing this a little bit. Keep it moving. Hips hinge back. The chest is definitely gonna come forward, but not so far forward that the sternum is parallel to the hip. Two more. 
last one. We're getting so strong. And take your mountain pose. So when we talk about core, we're going to talk about glutes, pelvic floor, hips, the whole torso, the whole kit and caboodle. Deep breath in and shake that out. All right, so we're gonna come on to the forearms. You can have the hands down or interlaced. Pick which is feeling better for the shoulders. And we'll bring the legs out. This time, you're going to be bending one knee out to the side and back, other knee out to the back. So instead of bending the knee forward, we're coming more into that kind of spider where we go into external hip rotation to the side. Now, we don't wanna drop so low the other side of the pelvis. It's gonna drop somewhat and that's okay. It can stay as stable as you want or you can come a little bit off, but I don't want you to drop out of support, okay, like I was just doing. So, external rotation, out to the side back, out to the side back. If you wanna go faster, you can incorporate a meet in the middle and back, a meet in the middle and back. And hold the plank harder because the toes aren't sticking down. And then, well, we need a child's pose. So rest down, knees can be together or separated, and just breathe here, catch the breath. So with this workout, it's a bit of a hit and core workout where we keep the heart rate pretty lifted. So we're in those calorie burning zones. Um, and if you haven't done any of my other hit videos or hit and yoga fusions, I'll link some uh, up in the cards because if you are looking for more of a calorie burn, also while getting your yoga and your stretching, it's a wonderful way to do it and you can do it pretty quickly. Breathing here. Okay, now from here, hands come down and we're going to go out to the sides. How far to the sides you go is up to you, but I don't want you to destabilize at your lumbar. So start small and both legs work at the same time on this one. So you're just moving sides and back, sides and back, okay? Now, you can go further out and back in, but if you do that, maybe slow it down. I'm gonna move over a little bit so you can see more of me in the frame. You wouldn't wanna miss these cool socks. <laughs> and back and forth. Ooh, those inner thighs, that low belly core really working, hamstrings, hips, all of it. Stay with it, I know it's burning. <laughs> That's because you're really working your core with these slides. Five, four, three, two, one, and child's pose, rest. So we wanna marry the work with rest. We gotta find balance after all. Breathing here. And we'll find our way up to standing. Find your stability surface. In front, the movement on this one is back behind you. So making sure that you have a clear space there. Both feet come on to start onto your stability surface. And then you'll just step the right toes off. Just the toes and the ball joints are down. And then from here, you'll start to hinge back into a lunge and stand up. So it's like when we were going to the side, but this time the slide leg is going back and up. So you might wanna start short or stay short with the movement to make sure the hip and the lumbar and the knee are happy with that. If you wanna take it further back, you can. If you wanna do something different with the arms, maybe fists of fire, reaching up as the leg comes back, drawing in as it comes forward, feel free to do that. Really working the legs in new ways. Deep work in those strong, strong glutes. Three more, just two, last one. Let's pause in our mountain pose. Again, if you have knee issues, very, very short, um, or do stepping on this one instead of sliding. Okay, well, we have another side. <laughs> Hands to the waist. Take that back, and again, if you're using plates, same principle, but just make sure your plate doesn't kick up against your stability surface. And start with a, with a small one, not a long range of movement, and then increase as needed. So you wanna make sure you're grounded in that front heel too, so that you're not just putting all of the weight into the front ball joints and toes, 
but you're grounding into the front heel. Maybe there is an arms element to this. And you could do something different. You could open the chest here, working here. You could come up and down here. I mean, whatever works. Everything is modifiable. It's all changeable. If this bothers your knee, you'll do a little step and back, little tap and back, okay? Stay with it in whichever modification feels best to you. I'm hoping that we feel these over the next couple of days and that we feel that we had to actually work and engage differently than we normally do, which is what we want to do, creating new ways of movement, new strength, new neuropathways, new synaptic firings. <laughs> Whew, say that three times fast. Synaptic firing, synaptic firing, synaptic firing. Okay, it's not that hard. <laughs> Two more. Last one. Mountain pose. Breathing here. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees any amount. Inhale, rise halfway up. Exhale, coming back to all fours for a moment. We'll be on the hands for the next movement and we're using some twisting. And twisting isn't really the correct word, it's more of a turning. So the movement looks like this. You might wanna watch first and then join in. You're gonna move your heels to the right, knees to the left. Okay, so it's a slide up, back. Then there's a switch, knees to the left, heels to the right, and back. So you can make a little V, just like this, little bitty V, back and forth. You could make it a big V. This is extremely hard, especially if you're really wanting to take the feet off to the sides. Maybe just do a little tiny turn and moving the hips to one direction, the knees bent to the other, and working there. Take a break as needed. If this is too much, one knee, other knee. First knee, second knee. Three, two, and one. If you don't feel that tomorrow, God bless you. You are, you, you never have to come back to work out again breathing here, <laughs> but I hope you will. Rest down. Find that breath. Kneel on your stability space. If you need more padding, add more padding. Tuck your toes under. Reach up. Exhale, bring your hands to your waist with the thumbs towards the spine. Loop your shoulder blades back, lift your sternum. Open the chest. We're also opening the front of the hips a little bit because we just did a lot of condensing. If you know and love any variation of camel pose, feel free to come into that. My body's not loving that right now, so I'm gonna skip it. And you don't have to even send the head back to get the benefits, shake that out. So on this next one, you can choose, again, just like everything, the degree to what you want to do and whether or not you're using the paper plates or socks. Forearms are going to be down once again. I would recommend on this one interlacing. Uh, you could watch this one first again and see what it looks like. So this is like a downward dog on the forearms. It's already harder because the feet want to slide. This is going to work the shoulders too. So you'll start to bring the gaze forward and down as the feet go back, and then hug the hips up with the head down as the feet come forward. So you're hinging at the hips and going back and forth. So I'm showing you kind of a really difficult version of this, okay? If you need to take the hands apart so that the head has room to kind of drop in and out, you can. Uh, the other variation of this is in and out with the knees on a paper plate or on a blanket like so, where it's more uh, less shoulders, even though it is shoulders and more core. And you're gonna, or, or, you're, or you shorten the range of movement to maybe four to six inches. Okay, up and down. Maybe slow it down. And last one, oh my goodness. And child's pose. 
<sighs> there will be no editing to make this look pretty at all. <laughs> it's going to look as messy as it really is. Just expanding and softening the lungs. That's it. Just breath. And we'll come up for the last of this work. So stability surface um, in the middle with room to take foot forward and to the side. So I'm gonna scoot this back a little bit. So I'm gonna stand kind of on the front edge here so I can go forward and to the side with my left foot. Left foot, it's really my right. I've already told you that. You're in on the secret, okay. Hands, let's just start them on the waist. You're gonna slide forward this time as you bend the front knee. <laughs> Stand up, back up, and then go sideways. Up, forward, up, side, up. So a little more of a compound movement. And then try to see if you can marry them together where it's just almost one sort of sweeping movement. Forward. I might need to move back a little bit so that you can see more of where my foot's going. Side, forward, side. Maybe your arms are brought into this. Doesn't take much for this to really start to shake and burn. Two more. Just smile through it. And mountain pose. Okay. <laughs> Just one more leg. Okay, to the edge of your stability surface. Just start to play with it. Don't go too far forward or too far to the side. Hands might be starting at the waist. Forward, stand, side, stand. That's where you start. It's when the foot goes away from you that the knee bends. When it comes closer to you that the knee straightens the standing knee. And then if you want to make it a little more of that fluid movement, you can do whatever you want with the arms, right? You can play with this. You can actually make a triangle. Be thoughtful about bringing joy into your practice and not always having to do it just like the instructor. But how does your body feel? What does it need? My body is saying it needs a break. It's gonna happen pretty soon. But we wanna get strong, strong, strong. Two more. Last one, and mountain pose. Unlock the knees, unlock the glutes, unlock the contents of the brain so that things easily flow in and flow out. We're no, there's no stagnation, we're not stuck. Deep breath in, and shake that on out. So this you don't need paper plates or socks for, but we wanna get a little bit more into our posterior core. So we're just gonna do one little lift. So lay on your belly, and if you wanna put a blanket under your belly for some support, um, make sure that it's covering the ribs and the pelvis so that they're on the same height. And then from here, reach your arms back. Take your gaze down. Loop your shoulder blades onto your back. And then any amount, lift the legs, lift the arms. Breathe here. Reach back like you're going to touch your socks if you're wearing them. Spread your toes in your socks. Breathe here. Work that posterior chain, beautiful wakefulness to that entire back body. Inhale and exhale, come on down and release. If you would like to take your Shavasana forward facing, you can. If it would feel best for your low back to come into a child's pose or a downward dog, you can make some space for that. And making your way, either staying on either of those or making your way onto your back. Hug the knees in, rock side to side. And then favorite twist to one side. So I like to extend the left leg, hug the right knee in, cross the midline, and open up the pectorals, 
reaching the right arm back. It doesn't matter if the knee's touching or the hand's touching, as long as you feel a safe stretch. That's the key, breathing here. And come back through the center line. Left knee and right leg extends, and then cross the midline, unfurl the left arm, and breathe here. So you're looking for releasing through the jaw and the neck, letting the rest of the body follow along. You've done a lot of work, and now it's time to find balance, which means giving yourself some stretching and some resting. Coming back to the center line. Bend the knees, soles of the feet to the floor, extend one leg, reach anywhere behind it or use a strap, maybe your hands to the foot and just open up. We worked the back of the leg a lot, so let's just give a stretch there. Just make it very attainable. Don't try to get the, the knee on the nose. And then other side. This is really good for the low back too, so just reaching the lumbar down as we stretch through the hamstrings here. And if the chin is jutting up, like mine just was, lift the head, extend, open the back of the neck, or put a blanket underneath the head or a little pillow. Maybe spread the toes out, maybe move the ankle. And pause here, breathe. Let the pelvis soften a little bit more. And then apanasana, hands to the kneecaps, and we're just gonna move away and back. This time you are letting the lumbar lift as the knees go away, and the lumbar root down as the knees come in. Back and forth. And set yourself up for your final relaxation pose, resting down. Part of becoming stronger is knowing when to rest. If all we do is go, 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 we're going to burn out. We're not going to feel balanced at all. And all of the work that we do, we're not going to rebuild the muscles. So we're just going to keep breaking down. So the rest time is when we're rebuilding. So stay in your Shavasana as long as you can. And let me, let me thank you personally for playing along for maybe doing something new and wacky with me, for uh, being another duchess or duke of sassy town. <laughs> um, it is so wonderful to know that you are on the other side of the lens when I am doing these workouts so that I don't feel alone. Um, please, if you have done this and gotten any value from it, leave me a comment. Let me know what you're interested in. Um, let me know how this all went for you. And please do hit the thumbs up. I give you two thumbs up for your hard work. Please eat um, some good quality food or take some high quality amino acids to um, kind of rebuild those muscles and make sure to hydrate. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. And thank you again. Namaste.